episode six. Episode six. <laughs> hey, I'm Margaret, and I am especially excited for today's van tour review because I will be reviewing this woman, Claire, who is insanely lovable. You're gonna fall in love with her with me. This video is already at 5.6 million views as of this morning, and it completely makes sense why. I really enjoy this tour. That being said, obviously when I critique this van, that is nothing against Claire. Claire is amazing. Just because a van has flaws doesn't mean it sucks. Amazing things can have flaws, and you can love things with flaws. But it is important from a design perspective to point out those flaws so we can improve layouts within the camper van community going forward. So let's get into it. Hello, I'm Claire. I'm 64 years old. I live full time in my van, which is a Fiat Ducato uh, Maxi 2016 uh, turbo diesel. I live fully off grid with solar power and a lithium system. Come and have a look inside. This is my van. And my van has a name and it's called the Mouse House. And there's a couple of little mice in there. Would you like to come inside? Come on in. Wow, I have to say, I love this for her. And I'm like strangely happy it exists, but I would never want something like this in my own van. The reason that I don't like having another extra entry unit is although it does really add to the look, having that door enter into your space is going to be a lot to kind of maneuver around from within the van itself. And then also imagine when you're at the grocery store and you have all of this stuff, you open the side of your van to load everything in and you have to open another door. Just giving yourself a little bit more to have to deal with. Um, behind that window is my office. I actually kept um, this because I had it in my house and I loved it. And it's just a cabinet, but it has a pull out shelf which is excellent for a keyboard because I like to work on the iMac standing up quite a lot. So a lot of gear here. So you could call this my office. Standing office, sure, if that's your thing. The only issue I kind of have with it is I like having the option to sit down even with a standing desk so you can kind of take the weight off. And that keyboard looks pretty low for her to have to work with. So might have to put a couple of books on top of that shelf and then put the keyboard there so it's at a nice um, angle while you're working. I had a house and I had a mortgage and as you might know being an artist your income is not much so then I thought well if I have something small and beautiful that I own without a mortgage that's going to make me feel a lot better than having four empty bedrooms and a mortgage and then maintenance coming along so I sold the house paid off the mortgage, bought an empty van and found people that would, um, would do what I wanted to do. I needed it to be beautiful. I needed it to be artful. I needed that every time I walked into it, I liked it. Something to keep in mind too when you're looking at these shots during van tours is mobile living is mobile. So when things are dangling down, they will have a tendency to swing this dangling plant right next to a little circular window. If you were to slam on the brakes, where is that dangling pot going to slap into? This little door, it takes you into my cab and that's a heat proof curtain to just keep any heat from the cab from coming into here. This side, here we've got the kitchen. I like to cook, so I have lots of spices and knives. This is my pantry, this one here. <laughs> So it's quite a long drawer that I pull out. I, I have a lot, I have all the spices and there and I have all the sauces there and olive oils and various bits and pieces in there. And the, the one at the bottom here has a hot water system at the back. Damn! But it also stores things like coffee beans, coffee grinder and a fire extinguisher. A three burner stove, an oven grill, 
Oh, and there's a really big cupboard here. It goes the full, the full width of the van up in here, so you know, many more things can be stored in there. Ooh. When it comes to that overhead storage, that is a big space. It spans, like she said, the full width of the van, and it's also very deep, especially within a ProMaster. To only have that tiny little opening, that tiny little drawer to be able to go out and grab something, so much would get lost or impossible to reach, or you would just not even know that it's back there. Kind of hard to utilize the storage space when you have a layout that doesn't allow you to have a bigger opening to access all of that. Underneath that, we've got the usual dishwashing liquid whoops, type stuff cupboard. And then the Atomic lives in there when I travel. Um, enough cutlery for an army, even though I live by myself. <laughs> Did you notice? That could actually be a really cool idea for a segment. Ooh. One eternity later. Okay. And we'll call it like, did you notice? And at the end, I will reveal what was a little bit funny about what she just showed us. I will see, did you notice? I like that, right? Yeah. This part of the bench is where I can cook things. So I've got plenty of room. But underneath it, this one lifts up. As you see, there's a couple of hinges. And this is actually my bathroom. So this will hold up here. I can put a shower curtain on here. And inside I have a, well it's a composting toilet, it has no chemicals whatsoever. And I also have a shower um, that I can just kind of hang up here. We have water. And the pump for all this is under my bed. So it's under about that area and the pump comes through for this and for the taps here. So that's a two-in-one thing. I've got extra bench space and I've got a bathroom and I've got storage. This is my preferred bathroom layout. I love convertible spaces like this, especially because it keeps that openness within your van. Brilliant size and location. I think a few things to note is she has that a lot of things that are dangling directly over where she would have to stand a shower. So like that fruit basket and some a couple of other things that would kind of get in the way so making it when you step in that you don't have any of that extra work not only putting up a curtain but then taking down some of the other things that you have hanging for decoration storage curtains i always have a little mixed feelings about because i find them a little gross <laughs> like it's not that they aren't useful it's just that they are very quick to mold they're really kind of complex to dry unless you're taking them out of the van and like hanging them up outside or draping them over your mirrors. Having them kind of sit on the ground, lumpy and wet, just I don't really like very much. You can definitely customize them by like cutting them to only be a certain length or width. You could also like glue some magnets to them to be able to throw them up against the side of the van itself to help dry against the sun. Otherwise, really love this bathroom layout. I think she did it really tastefully. So this is kind of my all-purpose sitting area, I suppose. I can sit on here and I can pull this table out here and eat a meal in quite a civil way. I can also invite a friend and put a fold-out chair there. What she did really well about this table as you see, when the table is fully extended, she's still able to get out from where she is sitting down. So if she forgets the salt or she wants a little bit more pepper, she doesn't have to take her food off of that table, put it on the counter in front, close the table, and then get up. I notice this a lot in these pull-out table scenarios that people trap themselves in their seating. So if they forget anything when they sit down or if they're even set up there for work and they need to grab their notebook, it's a whole process for them just to even escape their desk. So that's that part. I'm sitting on the fridge, which is, uh, I think it's about 50, oh, there you go. It's 52 liter Bushman. At the moment it's running at three degrees. sitting on the fridge, oh no. <laughs> Back to that same scenario I just spoke about, when you're sitting down and you're ready to eat your meal and you forgot the ketchup. 
Take everything off, put it all away, stand up, move the cushion, open the fridge and dig for what you need. Now we have a sympathy for Claire because when she's in the parking lot and she has big bags of food, opens the ProMaster, then opens the wooden door, goes in, picks up the top of the cabinet, and then picks up the top of the fridge in order to put something away. All of that work could have been halved. Well, this is all the solar stuff, which I, I honestly, hmm. apart from telling you that there's a 200 amp hour lithium battery, and there's other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there's other stuff and it all works. This is a big skylight. Um, I think at the time it was the biggest I could get. And I can wind this up so high that um, if I want to, I can stand on the bed and do night photography through there. I'll just show you how this can pulls back. And this one stops the full moon keeping you awake all night. <laughs> That roof window is amazing. I want that roof window. Even with a little fan would be nice too. Get that circulation. Well, the van itself, I remember I paid 26,000 for. It had 160,000 kilometers on it. I'm pretty sure all the inside, including, you know, the toilet, the fridge, the stove, the extra insulation, maybe 45,000. So maybe about 70,000 all up. See, it's a lot of money for a conversion. So keeping that in mind, I think the biggest way to always cut back on budget is cost of labor. <laughs> Just know that that will definitely be a bigger cost than if you were to self-convert. And on this side, this is another solar panel here. So I can put chairs, tables uh, in these spaces. Not the best use of that garage storage. I'm assuming the reason that there's not as much storage here from the back is because she has the two tanks and that full electrical system towards that front part of her bed. I do love the awning. I like that she has that whole outside space, that whole outside kind of yard to be able to open up into the environment around you. So that is really cool. Buy a van, get a van, do it. Plan it though, plan it. Spend some time, draw it, work out what you want in it because I think it's a bit difficult to keep buying and selling vans because you've made a mistake. Do it, life's too short to, to, you know, somewhere along the track saying, I wish I'd have done. Have a go at it. That gets me a bit emotional. She knows what it's all about. Wow, I feel really good about this van and I really like the customization. It just looks very clear, doesn't it? So now for the end of the episode, we'll go into the part of, did you catch it? And say, drum roll, please. <laughs> Those drawers are push to open. So you don't actually need to have those handles to pull anything out. That is strictly for decor. I'm not sure if that is something that a lot of people are able to notice. If not, maybe by watching more of these design reviews, you'll be able to start sharpening your eye for those little design details. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this series has been helpful. If it has been helpful, please do me a solid and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. That really helps the algorithm and it also helps show me how many people have been impacted by my feedback, which means a lot, especially for videos that are lower impact. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next Wednesday in another review. Have a good week.